Okay, so this is the last set of notes um, for minerals, and in this we'll just talk about um, some of the other things that you need to know about minerals. Um, one of them is that we group these minerals by minerals, their properties, uh, and how they interact chemically with other minerals and other atoms out in the world, uh, and also how they're arranged, what chemicals or what atoms they make up. Or what they make up, or what they're made up of, I should say. So, uh, the most common um, minerals are silicon oxygen uh, combinations. Uh, they're called the silicates. As you can see here, the silicates uh, are composed of silicon and oxygen. Uh, silicon, the uh, chemical symbol SI, and oxygen O, they combine in what's called a tetrahedron, where you have a silicon atom in the center and you have four oxygen atoms around those and this is by far one of the most common of the minerals and these silicon silicon oxygen tetrahedrons or they're called tetrahedron because of the pyramid shape they make um, when they're they're bonding they can form in sheets they can form in chains they can form um, clusters and so all of these combinations of um, this tetrahedron make the the silicates the most the, the biggest of the chemical family or the mineral family. The next thing that um, I wanted to point out, and this was something that we that you saw in the video or the video cast of the diamond versus the graphite molecules is the key thing that separates all minerals are the internal arrangement of the atoms. The way that those molecules, the silicon, the oxygen, the magnesium, all those different elements, the way that they're arranged determines their properties. So if they cleave, they cleave for a reason because their arrangement of atoms allows weak places within that mineral to break along a flat plane. If it fractures, the, the minerals are the molecules are aligned in a way that makes those molecules, those minerals, really resistant to breaking along regular planes, and so they break unevenly. And so that's what causes all of these characteristics. The way that the streak, the color of the streak, is that color because of the internal arrangement of the atoms. The way that the light reflects off the surface, whether it has metallic or non-metallic luster, that is determined by the internal arrangement of the atoms. So it's a really important point, and it's one that the regents loves to test. So we have both diamond and graphite. Both of these um, have different characteristics because, as you saw in that other video, the way diamonds are made, and if you haven't seen that video yet, you should go to the diamond versus the graphite video and see that. Um, the way that the diamond is arranged makes it so that it's very, very sturdy for all those molecules that are all bonded to each other and so there's no place of weakness as opposed to graphite that has those layers of um, sheets of molecules they're, they're formed in sheets and so when you use your pencil those sheets are just breaking right off as you're drawing along your um, paper so the paper is harder than the graphite and so the graphite just sloughs off in those sheets um, out of all of the known minerals only a few are found almost everywhere. So the ones that are most common, there's about a dozen of those. Those are the ones that we're used to using um, or used to seeing, and they make up all the other rocks. Um, and those are the ones that you'll see in the lab and the ones that are on the back of the reference table. So the ones on, on the back of the SRT on page 16 are the most common minerals that, that um, we see almost everywhere, and that's why you or they want the New York State wants you to know those. Nearly all rocks are composed of one or more minerals. So rocks are made out of these building blocks, minerals are the building block building blocks of those rocks. And there are some exceptions of course. Coal, which is made out of plant material. You know, as we talked about I think briefly at one point, um, we'll talk more about where coal comes from and limestone. Limestone comes from marine organisms organisms that live in the, in the ocean, corals, 
um, and shells, they produce calcite, and that calcite is put into the water, and then it settles out and forms limestone. So both of those two um, types of rocks are not made out of minerals because they're not naturally occurring. Like that, um, going back to the very first page of your notes, they were made by living things, so that meaning they're inorganic. They were naturally occurring, but they're, inor they're not inorganic. These were created by organic living things, and so that's what makes them um, not made out of minerals. All the other rocks, though, that we'll look at this year are made out of minerals. And we base it, we base all rocks based on how they're formed. So igneous rocks form differently than sedimentary and metamorphic. And, and from eighth grade, you should remember these, that igneous rocks are, are formed from melting, um, solidifying magma. Um, sedimentary rocks are made from deposited material, very compacted, cemented together sediment. And metamorphic, we take any any of the rock forms, we put them under extreme heat and pressure, and that changes the crystalline structure of those rocks, and that then becomes a metamorphic rock. And we'll have a lot of time to, to look at all three of these. Um, we'll first start with igneous rocks, probably, and then we'll move into um, sedimentary rocks when we talk about erosion and deposition, and then we'll talk about metamorphic when we talk about um, more um, the, the plate dynamics and uh, Earth's history. So those are the types of rocks, and they're all made out of minerals. I just introduced them here because we'll be talking about them um, in the next.